everybody, welcome back to the Crumbs and Doidies kitchen here in London. Thanks for joining me again. Now last week we made that amazing lemon meringue cake and you all loved it. Thank you so much for baking it. I've seen loads of your photos on Instagram. So today's recipe I was like, oh gosh, I've got to try and beat the lemon meringue cake, which was like a huge hit, um, which is a scary thing to do. So I thought we'd go and do something super traditional instead, something that you all need to know how to make, and that is a millionaire's shortbread. It looks kind of simple, but look how pleasing it is. So at the bottom, we've got a really delicious shortbread. It's super buttery and it just completely melts in your mouth. And then we've got a delicious caramel here, which is a little bit more like a toffee. And then on top, we've got milk chocolate, so you get the snap from the chocolate, you get the ooze from the caramel, and then you get that melt-in-the-mouth shortbread. And it is so amazing. I don't know why it's called a millionaire shortbread. This is something I probably should have looked up, so maybe you know why and you can let me know. But let's get on and make this. So we need to start by getting our shortbread in the oven and that is really easy. We are just gonna start by creaming together some butter and some sugar. So I've got 225 grams of really lovely soft butter. We want it to be soft because we want to cream it. Um, we need the sugar to dissolve, so make sure your butter is nice and soft. You can always pop it in the microwave for really short kind of bursts, stirring it between. So I'm gonna pop in 225 grams there, and then on top of that, we've got 125 grams of caster sugar. So I'm using a stand mixer for this, mainly because I'm just feeling a little bit lazy today, but you can very easily do this with a hand whisk thingy, electric one, or you can do it with a wooden spoon um, and a bowl because your butter should be nice and soft, so it should be quite easy to beat it all up. So I'm gonna get this going on a medium to high speed, and we're just gonna keep mixing until it's nice and smooth and the sugar started to dissolve, so it'll be a little bit kind of smoother, less grainy than it is now. So now we can add our flour. So I've got 340 grams of plain flour. Make sure it's plain, not self-raising, because you do not want any rise in your shortbread. And I'm also gonna add a teaspoon of salt. If your butter is salted, then you might wanna go with just half a teaspoon. Like this is why I prefer to use unsalted, because then you can really control how much salt you're putting in. So I would always recommend going for unsalted. And now I'm just gonna put my mixer back on, and we're gonna put it on the lowest speed, nice and gently, until it sort of starts coming together. Okay, so <laughs> turn that off and you can see it's sort of starting to clump together like so, but now I need to bring it all together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tip it all out onto our surface. So I'll just try and get my paddle off. And there might be some little bits of flour in there that haven't completely mixed in, don't worry. We're gonna do this next bit by hand. So it's just kind of the fun part. So what we're gonna do is bring it all together, squishing it, and very gently giving it a bit of a knead just to bring it together to form one nice smooth dough. Right, so now we need to get it into our tin and I am using an eight by eight inch square tin and I've lined all the sides completely because remember we're gonna put caramel, we're gonna put chocolate, we do not want any layers sticking to the sides because it's gonna ruin our lovely shortbread. So what I'm actually gonna do to get this in is I'm gonna break bits off and I'm gonna crumble it in to the pan because that way we're just gonna get it a bit more level than trying to squish this out in one big blob. So I'm just kind of making sure that I fill any big holes so that it's all kind of nice and even in there. And now we just need to squish it all down. I'm gonna start with my fingers, pushing it right down and into the edges. So that's all good, but it's looking a little bit lumpy bumpy still from my fingers. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got a little bit of greaseproof paper here and I'm gonna use that. And I'm actually gonna use this cake smoother and I'm gonna push on top of it and just kind of rub it around. So that's just looking a little bit more level, which means that we're gonna get those nice sharp kind of stages of our millionaire shortbread. But guys, if you just wanted to make some shortbread fingers, you can just bake this and eat it. What I'd recommend is just give it a score now, pop it in the oven, and you don't need to worry about the other bits and bobs. But we're gonna go and bake this now at 150 degrees C for 35 minutes. A 
Okay, so my shortbread was in for 35 minutes and you can see it's ever so slightly golden on top, but it's not too golden. So I know that's a tricky instruction for you guys, but 35 minutes, trust me. So it's really hot still, Ooh, but I'm just gonna leave it here and we're gonna get on with making our caramel slash toffee layer, which is super, super easy. It just takes a little bit of time and you can't go off and do something else, I'm afraid. We're gonna make it all in one saucepan and we're gonna put in some golden syrup and some sugar. So I've got 25 grams of caster sugar and 75 grams of golden syrup. And we're gonna add 120 grams of unsalted butter. And finally, a whole tin of condensed Condensed milk, which is a very specific 397 grams. But it's one of those regular sized tins, so just chuck all of that into your saucepan. Now we're simply going to heat this up. So first of all, we're gonna melt the butter, mix them all together, and then we're gonna keep it on a very low, steady boil, and it takes 20 minutes. I made it yesterday and I timed it for you guys. And you need to whisk this constantly because it will catch on the bottom and burn. And 20 minutes of whisking, <laughs> we have got ourselves some delicious, caramel and it smells absolutely divine. So we're gonna pour this straight onto our shortbread. And now we're gonna use our little cranked palette knife to very quickly push it around to make it nice and even. And that is setting very, very quickly. So you really wanna spread that out as quickly as you can, but just because it's setting does not mean it is cooling quickly. This is incredibly hot, so please do not be tempted to eat it, put your fingers in it, put your face in it. You can smell it from a distance, <laughs> but that is it, I'm afraid. We need to let this cool down completely before we put our chocolate on top, but don't you worry because, da -da -da, I have made one and it is set, it is nice and cold, so now we can get on with our chocolate topping, which I've just got all my stuff ready here. So we're gonna go for a nice thick layer of milk chocolate because that is the traditional way. You could put something like ganache on top, but that kind of stays soft and what you really want is that nice snap of the chocolate as you bite into it. It's delicious. So first we need to melt some chocolate um, and I'm sure a lot of you ooh, know about the troubles of chocolate and tempering it. It's a very complicated thing. So I'm gonna do a really simple kind of cheats way of tempering the chocolate and I'll talk you through it. So first of all, we need our Ban Marie. So we've got about an inch of water in this saucepan. And on top of the saucepan, we're gonna put a nice heat proof bowl. The most important thing here is that the water does not touch the bottom of your bowl. And now we can add our chocolate. So in total, I've got 300 grams of milk chocolate. If you wanna go for dark, that's fine, but milk is really the way to go for this recipe. Now I've taken out a third. So I've got 100 grams in this one and we are leaving that to one side. So into my Ban Marie, I'm gonna put 200 grams. And we're gonna stir that constantly until it has just melted. So once it's just about melted, I'm gonna take it off the heat. And first of all, I'm gonna make sure that my bowl gets nice and dry because any water that goes into your chocolate is gonna seize the chocolate and it's gonna ruin it. So just give it a good wipe. And I'm actually gonna pour it straight into a separate bowl, which is nice and cool, because what we're doing now is cooling down the chocolate. So this is all because chocolate is a very complicated little thing made up of all sorts of particles and they need to be in a certain formation otherwise they bloom when they set so sometimes you'll have seen chocolate with like have white smears or speckles across it or maybe it doesn't snap like you want it okay and it's all about heating and cooling it down to certain temperatures it's very complicated and this is really a very kind of cheats way so now I'm going to add in my third so my 100 grams that I saved back and we're going to pop that in and stir it until it's melted so just keep stirring all the time it will melt the kind of movement of the chocolate as your the kind of motion that will help it melt as well it feel like it's taking a long time but it will get there there we go and you can actually see it's quite a lot thicker now uh, than it was when we had it melting in the bowl so it's cooled down a lot that's a good indication of how you're doing with the tempering there now we just need to pour it on top of our shortbread and make it look pretty So again, using my trusty cranked palette knife, I'm gonna spread it around, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of a wave in there with my palette knife. And 
And now all we need to do is let this set completely. So if you've had your caramel chilling in the fridge, it won't take very long to set, and then we can cut it and eat it. It looks so good. This shortbread, I've got a feeling, is perfectly crumbly. And we've got that really neat layer of caramel and a big old wadge of chocolate on top. Okay, here we go. Mmm. 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 That is like. Maybe it's called millionaires because you feel like a millionaire when you eat it because it tastes so good. But that makes sense, because that is incredible. All those textures and all those flavors going on at once, it's amazing. And it's so, so easy to make. So please enjoy making this. You could jazz it up as well, like you could chuck pretzels in it. I know that Nikki over on Instagram has been baking like heaps during this whole coronavirus situation. And she made one the other day with like burnt butter and ganache. So there's loads of stuff you can do. Go and check out her Instagram as well. I've got all of this to eat and I cannot wait because I really do feel like a millionaire when I'm eating it. <laughs> Please tag us all over on Instagram. We'll put our tags on screen now. Use the hashtag, hashtag Cupcake Gemma. Um, and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well and press the bell so you get all the notifications and you can see all our uploads and all our videos. And we'll be back very soon with another recipe for you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs>